Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm going to do an unboxing of a budget pistol that's rather new to the market here in the United States. And this will be the Stoger STR9. And real quick story to show you how excited I am. So let's go back about a year ago. We're going to see the cover of this Guns and Ammo magazine from March 2019. And it has the Stoger STR9 on the cover. And I remember when I got this in, I was on the phone with a friend and I was like, man, I hope this actually comes to the United States because when it does, I'm going to buy one. It said right here, starting at $2.99. Functionally, a lot like a Glock. I'm like, man, this sounds pretty cool. So it all started when I got this magazine, probably in late February of 2019. And here we are today in 2020, and I finally have a Stoger STR9. So we're going to unbox it. And I'm going to do like I typically do in these videos. I'm going to go through. This is a true unboxing. I've not handled it, looked at it yet. It was just opened by the gun shop owner when he did the paperwork. So I'm going to give you my first impressions, tell you what I think of it, and we'll both just kind of learn together here. So took it out of its sleeve that it comes in. And real quick, the purchase of this was made possible by my Patreon supporters and people that are using my Amazon link. So thank you so much, guys, for helping me to still bring current content to the channel, even in times like these. And the links for both are down in the description. So let's take a look. We've got our brown cardboard box under the sleeve. It comes with an owner's manual, a gun lock with a couple keys in it, the pistol itself, a magazine loader, and a Palmetto State Armory sticker, which is where I purchased this pistol. And the purchase price on this was 300 but they had a coupon code for $50 instant savings, which brought the price down to 250 bucks. So that was pretty cool. So it comes in a blue VCI bag. All right. What do we have here? Well, my initial impressions are this. Just looking at it right now, for the first time, well, it comes with like this Ranger band or rubber band, if you want, on the grip, which is kind of cool, I guess, but I'm going to go ahead and take that off so I can get a natural feel for what the actual grip feels like, right? So we have a striker fired, 9mm pistol, polymer frame, steel slide, and when I first look at it, I see a couple different guns, right? <clears throat> it reminds me of a Glock as far as the takedown here, okay? It reminds me of a Smith & Wesson m and when it comes to the aggressive scallops on the slide and the back strap. But I'm also seeing an HK VP9 on the front here with the way the front of this grip is. So right off the bat, I'm thinking kind of Glock kind of M&P and kind of HK VP9 and that's not bad company be, to be in if you think about it right some pretty good ones right there so like I said striker fired polymer framed 9 millimeter this particular version that I bought comes with one 15 round magazine and this is a double stack stainless mag with sight windows numbered all the way up to 15 there there's a couple other configurations you can purchase this firearm in, including one that comes with three magazines and three back straps. This is the economy model. It's the same pistol as a whole, but it still comes with just the one mag, one back strap, which is the medium back strap. So that's what we have here. This is available in several different deluxe packages, like I said, including the mags and the extra back straps, as well as a version that has night sights. But for the purposes of this review, this is the base model that's currently available for $300 or less. And in the case of this one, it was purchased just a couple weeks ago from Palmetto for actually $250. So this is the version I bought because I don't have a lot of money right now and because a lot of you are looking for budget options. So there you go. It weighs in at about 26.4 ounces. The barrel's 4.17 inches. The barrel is a regular carbon steel, 
nitrided, so it's got the nitride surface treatment, which is going to not only make it have the black appearance, but add to durability, longevity, and some surface hardening. So that's a good thing, nitrided barrel. The slide is also a carbon steel with the same nitride surface treatment. The grip. Sometimes I'm not a big fan of finger grooves, but in this case, they just happen to meet up with the way my fingers would naturally hold the pistol, and it's actually not bad. Now, on the back strap, we have rather, rather aggressive pylons, if you will, here. They're rather pointy. They definitely grab right into the palm of my hand. Feels very secure. I don't feel that the pistol is going to want to move side to side too much or up and down, which is a good thing. Whereas the sides of it are rather smooth with a little bit of light sandpaper, grainy texture, if you will, but definitely not very aggressive. And for me, that's fine because I get most of the grip of my pistol, probably first and foremost on the back strap, as well as along the front. And I squeeze with the off hand here, and I normally shoot in a thumbs forward position. So the way I shoot, I actually prefer to have more mild texturing on the side and more aggressive on the rear where I need it the most. So the grip feels pretty good. These could be, in some people's opinion, on the little bit aggressive side. But what I would note, this is real easy. If you want to soften the grip in the back just a little bit, you can just take a little bit of light sandpaper and just lightly rub it over the back here. And it'll kind of dull the points of these pylons and make it where, if for some reason it's bothering your hand, you know, it'll soften it up a little bit. But I don't think I'm really going to have a problem with that. It does feel very comfortable right off the bat. Now what I'm also noticing, which is really nice, is it has a rather nice undercut for the middle finger here of the shooting hand. See how much I can get that whole middle finger in that undercut area? That's nice. And it also has a little bit of a recess here where they've actually gone and narrowed the grip frame right here where the pointer finger or your trigger finger would be. We can see the dimple right there, which is very nice. Same thing over here on this side where your thumb would ride so right away it actually just fits my hand very naturally plenty of a beaver tail along the back of the frame where i don't feel like i'm in any danger of getting any kind of slide bite or anything like that the beaver tail is not the largest i've seen but plenty big enough where i can just put my hand right in there choke up on the pistol and this does have a rather low bore axis. So the fact of how comfortable it is, just the way the contours are and the design of the grip frame itself, undercut trigger one more time, huge deal. I really love that. So I can get my hand up as high as I can. Yeah, this is very comfortable actually. I'm really liking it so far. Well, going along the front here, we can see there's a little bit of a serration if you will on the front of the trigger guard some people choose to hold their pistol like this i do not but if you want to you're going to like that it's rather flattened with a little curvature here if this is how you choose to shoot you're going to like that me i like to bring my whole support hand down here and just put the thumbs forward so it doesn't really matter to me how that's shaped on the front of the trigger guard but hey you can see it has standard Picatinny rail slots right here on the front. So that's definitely nice. Now, this is imported by Stoger Industries, Stoger STR9. <clears throat> However, the gun is made in Turkey and imported into the United States by Stoger. Some of you are going to like that, some of you aren't. You guys are going to have to decide that for yourself. But many guns from Turkey such as the Canic series and then the recent TSOS SDS imports 1911s that I've been showing on the channel have proven to be great guns for a lot of people so I look at that as actually a good thing because I feel I'm getting a lot of bang for my buck with a lot of these Turkish guns lately that I'm coming in the country some of you aren't gonna like that and you know what that's totally fine with me okay I could care less so I do want to mention right away that yes indeed the firearm is manufactured in Turkey and not in the United States or Germany or otherwise. So there you go. The sights, we've got three dot sights. 
that appear to be very nice actually. I can get a very good sight picture. They're nice and bright. It appears actually that this is a steel sight in the back. And it is. Nice. So we've got steel, rear, two dot, and then a single dot front sight post that are actually constructed of steel, which is a nice option. Glocks, OEM Glocks are polymer, for example, and that's one of the first things that many people do is they upgrade from their polymer sights to the steel sights. So that's definitely nice. Now, <clears throat> this basically fits into a compact size, right? So this has an overall length of 7.4 inches, the height's five and a quarter inches, and it's 1.3 inches thick, which fits it into this common compact size that seems to be all the rage nowadays. Firearms such as a Glock 19, for example. This fits right into that same size, 15 plus one. It's also very similar in size and price to the SD9VE. 16 plus one, but very similar size firearms, really. Almost <laughs> identical overall size. Also, the Taurus G3 with the Forge Tech holster here. And you guys know I really have become a big fan of these Taurus pistols, including the G3. And here we are. Very similar in size to the G3 overall. Let's see if I can line those up. You can see the guns are basically completely <laughs> hiding the other one, which shows you how similar these pistols really are in size. Well, Taurus G3 goes for about 240 250 bucks. Smith & Wesson SD9 VE. I think I paid like, if you look at the gun itself, I bought this with a flashlight, but about 250 bucks on sale. And that brings us here to the Stoger STR9, <clears throat> 250 bucks. So, wow. And I apologize for clearing my throat so much, guys. Allergies have gone crazy around here just in the last three or four days, and it's spring in Michigan. So, if I'm clearing my throat a little bit, I'm all right. Just the standard allergies that a lot of us battle every early spring, like it is here. All right. I'm going to remove the magazine which has a really nice fit, drops free effortlessly. So that's a good thing right there. Look at that. Not a problem. Definitely drop free. And if you did have the mag jam up a little bit, I noticed there's a couple little dimples here on both sides, which gives you an area to put your finger. If the mag caught up a little bit, say there was a round halfway jammed, right? That's happened to all of us at least once. There's a spot where I can put my fingers right here to be able to rip the magazine out so all these little features they don't seem like much but when you're actually using the gun in real life things like this matter so that's definitely a cool little plus the back straps are user replaceable and if you buy the other version that has the replaceable back straps I did notice by looking at the owner's manual online that we are gonna find your instructions in here on everything guys how to replace your back straps how to field strip the firearm, all of that kind of stuff. So I found the manual's actually decent because it truly shows you, you know, what you need to do. There's the picture of you replacing your back straps, for example. And like I said, this is the economy version. There is a little bit more of a deluxe package that shows you how. <clears throat> shows you how if you bought that package. Even shows you how to disassemble your magazines and everything. People have been asking me that lately in the comments. How do I disassemble my magazine? Well. If you buy one of these, shows you all the components of the mag and how to disassemble it. So that's pretty cool too. All right, so as with most pistols, the slide does hold open on an empty magazine. Our slide release is on the left-hand side. Sheet metal design, it has three large serrations here. My thumb seems to come up naturally and find it. So yeah, pretty ergonomic, really. Same thing, you push up on it to hold your slide open if you have an empty mag. Yeah, good air goes there. Again, it feels like I have a lot of reach. I can really just reach my hand right in here the way this frame is scalloped out. And then with the undercut for my middle finger, I have no problem getting to these controls 
and I have medium sized hands. My hands are not extremely large, so that's great. It comes out of the box with a left, a left hand mag release button. However, this is swappable. You can swap this around from the left to the right, and the instructions on how to do that are right there in the owner's manual. So that's why I reference that. So this does not have ambi mag release, but it does have reversible, which is nice. As far as your slide, stop, slide release, that's only going to be on the left side. There's nothing over here on the right, which it's going to bum out you lefties a little bit, but me being a right-handed shooter, I'm actually glad it's not there because sometimes it kind of rubs on my finger and I don't like it. So for me, this is a good thing for lefties. It's going to bum you out a little bit. I get it. There are no external safeties on this pistol. However, it does incorporate a trigger blade safety right here. This is something you're going to recognize from your Glocks, from your Taurus, G2C, G3. Many pistols have, you know, lately incorporated themselves over to this Glock style trigger safety, if you will. So there you go. Now this also has a striker block safety or an inertia safety built into the slide, meaning the trigger actually has to be pulled before the striker can fall forward. So if you were to drop the pistol with a round chambered, it's very unlikely, if not almost impossible, that the striker would just spring forward because there's a little button that has to be pushed up in the slide that can only be acted on by the trigger. So there's your safeties. This does not have a magazine safety. It will fire with no magazine in the gun, which I like that feature. I think that's great. I can't stand magazine safeties because it usually makes the trigger pull worse and just something else to go wrong right usually several other linkages and components that can go wrong so that's a good thing for me too the takedown is going to be very similar to a glock where you just pull it back a little bit push down on these two tabs here this little lever if you will let it go forward while they're held down pull the trigger and then you can take it off so i'm not going to take it apart on this video i'll do that in a follow-up but basically Glock style, G2C, G3 style disassembly. So that's pretty nice too. Pretty standard there. All right, let's check out the trigger. So this is going to be a single action or preloaded striker, whatever you want to call it. Once you pull the trigger, it's dead. You have to reciprocate the slide to get your trigger back again. It does feature the trigger safety blade. So if you push the trigger on the sides here like I am, it's not going to actuate the trigger. You actually have to pull squarely in the middle, first depressing this safety, then you can pull through. So let's get my first impressions on this trigger. All right. I'll tell you right away, it's not the lightest trigger I've ever pulled. They say these come in around seven and a half pounds or so, 7.6, something like that out of the box. And I believe it. This does feel like it's definitely over seven pounds. Now, with any trigger like this, they usually break in and you can easily drop half a pound to even a pound after it's thoroughly broken in. But I will say this, the trigger pull is very crisp, very predictable. So I'm gonna pull the trigger here, depress the blade safety, just a little bit of travel there, a firm wall, and then it just crisply breaks which is actually nice. Let's look at the reset here. A nice sharp reset and a very crisp break. You know what? I actually think I like this trigger. It's not the lightest trigger, but a light trigger in my opinion doesn't always mean the best trigger. What I look for in a trigger is I like a nice short reset. That's a plus. And then how predictably and how crisp does it break? And when I'm coming off the reset here, it breaks very, very crisply. Let's try this again. Oh yeah. The trigger's actually pretty darn nice. Now one thing if I were to nitpick, I'm already noticing, when I push this little blade, this safety blade in, it does not sit, and it's going to be impossible probably for my camera to catch this, but it does not completely fit flush. It sticks out. See that there? I think you might be able to see it. It sticks out just a little bit, which is a little bit annoying. 
I think I should do a comparison to this to the G3. If anyone's interested in that, let me know down in the comments. But the blade does stick out a little bit. You GTC owners are going to know what I'm talking about. Does it hurt my finger? No. But I can see after shooting quite a few rounds, it could be a little bit of discomfort. I'm already noticing a little line forming in my finger because the blade does not fit completely flush. So I'm going to give the trigger a little bit of a knock there. But the reset's rather interesting. So when the slide reciprocates, it's going to reset this trigger. And there's a spring that's going to kick it back out. And I'm noticing it's actually putting quite a bit of pressure on my finger. So what I mean by that is when I reset the slide, I'm actually having to keep the trigger held back with more force to keep it back than I do on a lot of my pistols. Another way to describe it would be this. When you cycle the slide... It feels like it wants to kick your finger right out there, which is actually pretty cool. I'm thinking this is going to be a pretty fast shooting pistol. It definitely wants to kick or bump that finger right out. So the reset, the spring for the reset has quite a bit of power, and it's definitely giving my finger a rather abrupt push forward, which probably going to result in faster follow-up shots. And the fact that the trigger pull is... A little over seven pounds or so which i definitely believe okay what the manual says they say 7.6 pounds i'm gonna say it's all of that right probably not going to be accidentally bump firing this thing shooting it fast off the reset now these are all just my opinions out of the box but i think i'm gonna be able to shoot this pretty quickly and i'm actually looking forward to it quite a bit Um, there's a warning on the side of it fires without magazine which I told you earlier made in Turkey imported by Stoger Industries Inc so there's our import marking molded right into the frame right there from what I understand these are made by a Turkish factory I don't exactly know who's making them Stoger's kind of kept that a little bit tight-lipped because they are the exclusive importer of this pistol in the United States the slide has a really nice look to it. It has the rear serrations, which are heavy scallops. I have no problem coming over the top to rock this pistol. If I come from the rear like this, also no problem. These are rather aggressive serrations. Now, if you're into press checking or for whatever otherwise reason, you know, racking from the front of your slide, same aggressive texturing there. And it actually has the same amount of slide serrations on the front as it does the rear. So... If you're taking a quick peek in there, you're good to go. So a lot of you guys are going to like that feature with the front slide serrations. Although I normally rack my pistol from the rear. There's instances where people could want to rack it otherwise, including these rear sights. These sights have a rather high 90 degree shelf and are metal. So I could see not having a problem whatsoever rocking this pistol off of a countertop or something. See what I mean? I'm not going to rack it off the magazine, but this is just to show you guys a little perspective. They're definitely squared off 90 degrees, so racking it off of a belt like people do, racking it off of a table, these sights are definitely going to come in handy. And they are in a dovetail, it looks like, with a set screw. So I don't think these rear sights are going to go anywhere. So yeah, nice. Steel rear, and as far as I can tell, a steel front sight. Oh yeah, yep, we've got steel all the way around on this one, which is pretty cool. So, plus sides of this pistol. Just got this for 250 bucks, and that's even during this somewhat of a panic buying that's been going on. So the price is right. It appears to have high quality features. I mean, you've got the nitrided slide, nitrided barrel. A nice guide rod that appears to me it's stainless steel. I'll have to confirm that in a later video. Warranty. This comes with a five-year warranty. So it does not have a lifetime warranty like some other pistols do. But they do give you a rather generous five years. And I would note this is a limited warranty that's limited to the original purchaser. So basically a five-year non-transferable warranty. Not the best in the industry by any means, but better than some of the companies who are only offering a one-year. So... I don't know if that's a pro or a con. I'd say that's kind of middle of the road. It'd be nice if it had a lifetime warranty, right? But like I said, the ergos are great. I like the back strap grip. The finger grooves are actually just fine with me. Reminds me literally a lot of a Glock. 
which functionally on the inside it's very similar to a Glock. However, essentially none of the parts are interchangeable. I read you could change the locking block pin out with a Glock, but it actually ends up being too short. So for all intents and purposes, nothing's compatible with a Glock as far as direct change of parts, even though it's set up almost exactly like a Glock internally. And I'll do a follow-up video showing you guys the internals of this, as well as some shooting, obviously, too. Ergos, it reminds me a lot of a Smith M&P, as well as a HK VP9, kind of a crossbreed between those two. Nice undercut of the trigger guard, which is really nice. Talking serrations are excellent. The slide is a nice shape and a nice look in my opinion. You can see there's a nice rounding on the edges. The top of it's pretty clean. It does have a physical loaded chamber indicator, which I actually like. If you guys remember in my Taurus videos, I love the G3. Love it. But it was one little downfall that they just went to the little sight window, whereas the G2C actually has the physical loaded chamber indicator that we can see right here. So that was kind of something that I missed. Well, this does have the physical loaded chamber indicator, which I like quite a bit. And why don't I throw a couple snap caps in here? If you don't know what snap caps are, guys, go back and check the channel. Basically, these are real ammunition size and weight, and they're gonna act just like real ammo when it comes to the feeding, but they're not gonna fire. There's no powder in here, and there's rubber in place of the primer. So let's load up a couple. We'll check out that loaded chamber indicator. See if this thing chambers, if it extracts, if it ejects. And then we'll kind of wrap it up because I think I've gone over this pistol pretty well. And I know these videos tend to be a little long, but this is just me naturally going through and letting you guys know what I'm noticing with the pistol as I see it. And if I haven't said it yet, so far, pretty favorable actually. I'm really looking forward to shooting this because I like the way it fits my hands. I like some of the features that it comes with and the overall design of this pistol is very similar to guns that literally cost twice as much. 250 bucks guys. Retail price. That was to me. I got the same price you all do. No sponsors send me guns on this channel. Like I said, my Patreon supporters, people clicking on that Amazon link is actually why this gun's here right now. So I've got three snap caps loaded up, right? The magazine inserted flawlessly. I always give my pistols a little love tap. All right, let's see what it does. Chamber the first snap cap, no problem. We can see that loaded chamber indicator did pop up just a little bit there. Nothing too gaudy, but enough to where if it's dim lighting or if it's dark, you could kind of close your eyes if you needed to, you know, and feel that yes, that round is indeed chambered. Maybe you want to do that instead of press checking, right? So we got a round loaded up. The magazine still has two in it. Let's see what it does. Wow, that chucked it right out of there. Loaded the next one, no problem. Threw that next one out of there. Had a little bit of a time extracting the third one. Let's see if that was just me. I was trying to aim it in a way that that it didn't um go flying too far. So let's drop the slide on here. I'm going to use the slide release catch lever here. All right. All right, it threw it out of there the second time. I've had a couple pistols lately, including my TH9C, where on the last round, you really got to rip it out of there, which when you're firing the pistol is not a problem because it's going much faster than when you're cycling by hand. But I think that last time I was just kind of paying more attention to where I was aiming it because I don't want it to go behind a bunch of stuff here. Yeah, for those of you that do videos, you know what I'm talking about, right? Looks like I can close it pretty easy on an empty mag. Not too bad. So there you go. Budget 9mm pistol, striker fired, made in Turkey, imported by Stoger Industries. Really liking the trigger on it actually, quite a bit. The pull, yeah, very crisp, very short reset. It definitely wants to kick your finger back out on the reset, which I think is going to make this pretty fast shooter if that's your thing all right i'll do more videos on this a follow-up we can take it apart inside what do you guys want me to do with this i could do a comparison or versus with the sd9 ve which is very similar in price size whatnot the taurus g3 
I've done quite a few videos on this pistol, but I'm definitely would love to do another video on it. So do you want me to compare it to the Taurus G3? Although it's not the same price range, I have my Glock Polymer 80 build. We could do a side-by-side -side and look at the internals and whatnot and see how much Glock we actually have in this versus a Glock, right? Sounds like some exciting videos I can do with this pistol. But yeah, anyways, I've been waiting over a year to get this. Like I said, I looked at that magazine probably 14 months ago and said, I want one. I want to see what Stoger is going to bring to the market, bring to the United States here. And so far, I think this is going to be a good shooter. Let me know what you guys think of this pistol. And if you're looking forward to more videos on it, I'm definitely going to do more regardless. But let me know what you guys are looking to see. Different comparisons or whatnot. And by the way, more videos on this SD9VE coming up very soon. All right, guys. If I miss something, I'm sure you guys will remind me. You always do. And I'll catch that in the follow-up. All right. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.